five, four, three, two, one. When people picture a rocket landing, they usually think of a pencil balancing on its tip. That picture is not wrong, but it misses the hardest part. A rocket like Starship comes down straight and it is tall. It is about 50 meters tall, which is like a 15-story building standing on one end. When something that tall lands, the feet matter more than anything else. Without good legs, the rocket tips over, it breaks, and the mission ends. Starship is not a small rocket. It is the biggest rocket ever built. Fully fueled, it weighs about 5,000 tons. That is like stacking 800 full-size pickup trucks in one place. When it lands, it does not weigh that much because the fuel is gone, but it is still huge. Even empty, it weighs more than a large airplane, so the legs have to handle massive force. SpaceX did not just start over, they used a proven idea, they already solved a landing problem before with the Falcon 9 rocket. Falcon 9 lands regularly. Falcon 9 is much smaller, but the basic idea still applies. Falcon 9 has legs that fold up during launch. They swing out before landing. They spread wide. That wide stance is like spreading your feet when lifting something heavy. You feel more stable. This is how pattern recognition helps engineers solve new problems by looking at old successes. SpaceX did not just copy the old legs, they studied them. Falcon 9 has landed more than 300 times, that is more successful landings than most rockets had in history combined. Each landing gave them crucial information. That information showed how legs bend, how shock moves, and where stress builds. Starship needs to land on the moon. The moon has less gravity. Gravity is how hard the ground pulls you down. On Earth, gravity is strong. On the moon, it is about one-sixth. That means Starship comes down slower, but the ground on the moon is uneven. It is covered in dust and rocks. Mars is even harder. Mars has thin air. That makes engine control harder. Wind can push the ship sideways, so the legs must handle uneven ground and sideways force. That is why the new legs are spaced wide. There are six of them. Six legs mean the load spreads out more evenly. Six legs also give redundancy. If one leg fails, five can still hold the ship up. Up. This is a key safety feature. These legs fold in tightly during launch because space matters. Every extra inch adds weight. Weight costs fuel. Fuel costs money. When Starship launches, the legs are tucked close to the body. When it is time to land, gravity helps. The legs drop down instead of being pushed out hard. This saves energy. It reduces failure points. This focus on saving energy and material is resource protection in action. Inside each leg is a telescoping section. Telescoping means sliding tubes inside each other. Think of an old radio antenna. It pulls out longer when you need it. When Starship touches the ground, the legs compress. That compression soaks up the shock. shock absorption is like a car's suspension system. Without it, the force would snap parts. Starship may still be moving at several meters per second when it lands. If you lock your legs when jumping, you break them. If you bend your knees, you absorb the hit. The landing legs do the same thing for the rocket. This is where human decisions show up. Engineers argued about the design. Some wanted fewer legs to save weight. Some wanted more legs for safety. The fight is always weight versus safety in rockets. Six legs won, six gave the right balance. Each leg is taller than a one-story house when fully extended. The legs must reach past the engine bells. The engine bells stick out like flower petals. Financial thinking also matters a lot. Reusing Starship is the main goal. Reuse saves money. Building one Starship costs far less than throwing one away every time. A Starship hull is cheaper than many fighter jets. Fighter jets cost over $100 million each, enough to build dozens of schools. Reuse spreads that cost over many flights. This is strategic intelligence at the company level. If a starship tips over on landing, reuse ends. The ship is scrap. So spending extra effort on strong legs makes perfect financial sense. That effort pays back over time. Timeline tracking shows the pace of this effort. Early leg ideas appeared in 2019. By 2021, engineers had thrown those first ideas out. By 2023, new designs were being tested. That was a full rebuild from scratch. Engineers knew the early legs were too stiff. 
Stiff sounds good, but it is not. Stiff means the force has nowhere to go. Force breaks things. Flexible systems survive better. There is also the issue of lunar dust. On the moon, dust is sharp. It is like broken glass. It sticks. It gets everywhere. Dust can jam joints. So Starship legs are designed with covers and sealed parts. Seals keep dust out. This adds complexity but increases survival. China is also building its own moon landers. They have tested small landers with robotic missions. Their landers are smaller, they work well. But making something bigger is hard. Starship aims to land over 100 tons of cargo. That is like landing 15 fully loaded pickup trucks at once. This creates a competitive scoreboard. No other country has shown a system that can land that much mass on another world and take off again. That is competence demonstration shown through results, even if the results are still coming. NASA needs Starship for moon missions. NASA sets safety rules. SpaceX must meet them. This pressure pushed leg design harder. That is one area where oversight helps. Engineers tested legs on uneven concrete. They placed blocks under one leg to pretend there were rocks. Sensors measured the load. Engineers adjusted the angles. Small angle changes made big differences in how the load was shared. The shock absorber design is not a simple spring. It uses dampers. Dampers slow movement. They turn motion into heat. Cars use them. Without dampers, springs bounce. Bouncing on landing is bad. It can tip the ship. These legs are mainly for the moon and Mars. Earth landing versions may be different. Earth has stronger gravity. The landing pads are flat. That allows for different choices. This shows modular thinking. Different jobs get different tools and systems. Justice through consequences is a constant pressure here. If legs fail, missions fail. There is no hiding that. Space is unforgiving. The legs are designed to handle off-center landings of over one meter. One meter is about the length of a kitchen table. That tolerance is huge for a rocket this tall. That gives the computer and the human pilots a safety margin. Think back to 1969. Picture a spindly machine hanging under a rocket stage. That machine is the Apollo Lunar Module. It looked like foil and sticks. That thing carried two men to the moon. It had four thin legs. Those legs were critical. If one leg failed, the crew could tip over and die. Each leg had to bend just right. Too stiff and it snaps. Too soft and it collapses. All four legs together weighed about two tons. That is about 4,000 pounds. That is the weight of a large pickup truck, fully loaded. Just the legs. Those legs were built for a small vehicle. The lunar module weighed about 15 tons when it landed. That is like three large buses stacked together. The moon has weak gravity. That helps. The legs did not need to hold as much force. They also did not need to be reused. They landed once. They were left behind. That choice saved weight. Each Apollo leg had a crush pad at the bottom. When it hit the ground, it squashed. That soaked up the shock. Now look at Starship. This thing is massive. It is shiny steel. It stands taller than a 30-story building. When Starship lands, it could weigh between 150 and 200 tons. That is like landing a fully loaded freight train car upright on legs. That is a completely different problem. Starship is meant to land, take off, and land again. You cannot crush the legs and leave them. You you need legs that survive. You need legs that fold. You need legs that do not break after one use. Reuse is the core idea. Reuse is what cuts cost. Think about a good folding ladder. It locks in place. Starship legs must be like the best, strongest ladder you have ever used. But they are landing from the sky at high speed. Apollo floated down gently. Starship fires its engines to slow down hard. That means engine power pushes against the legs at the moment of landing. That force goes straight through the legs into the ground. The forces are huge. Even though Starship is 10 times heavier than the lunar module, the landing forces can be even higher because of the engine thrust. That means the legs must handle more stress than Apollo ever did. SpaceX has not published the exact weight of Starship's landing legs. Designs are still changing quickly. The legs could weigh many tons, not two tons, several times that. 
maybe 10 tons or more. 10 tons is like five pickup trucks, just the legs. This is the simple math of scale. Bigger vehicle means stronger parts, but weight is the enemy. Every extra ton of leg is one less ton of cargo. Cargo is why Starship exists. That trade is crucial. Apollo accepted fragile legs to save weight. SpaceX tries to balance strength and weight at a much bigger scale. They use stainless steel. It is heavier than aluminum, but it is strong. It handles heat better. It is cheap. Cheap matters when you build dozens of ships. Technical mastery means making the right trade-offs between cost, weight, and strength. Now think about uneven ground again. The moon is not flat. Mars is worse. Rocks, slopes, craters. Apollo landed on unknown terrain. One leg hit a rock on Apollo 15. It bent more than planned. It still worked. That saved lives. Starship must do the same, but at much higher weight. This is why they chose wide stance legs. Wider stance means more stability, but wider legs take up more space. They interfere with cargo doors. Everything is connected. One choice forces another. Some Starship designs remove traditional legs for Earth landings. The booster is caught by arms on the launch tower. That removes legs and saves weight. But you cannot do that on the Moon or Mars. No tower there. So the ship must carry legs for those missions. That makes Mars ships heavier than Earth ships. Apollo did not care about reuse. Cost was secondary. Speed was everything. Starship cares deeply about reuse. That is the core difference. Your tax dollars funded Apollo fully. They also fund parts of Starship through NASA contracts, which is a great information hunt for value and progress. But SpaceX adds private money. That changes incentives. The government also pays Boeing to build the Space Launch System, or SLS. One SLS launch costs $4.1 billion, according to NASA's own Inspector General. That is billion with a B. For comparison, Starship is supposed to cost about $10 million per launch once it is fully working. One SLS launch costs four ten times more than one Starship launch. That same $4.1 billion could pay for 410 Starship launches. That is a stunning cost comparison. That same $4.1 billion is enough money to buy everyone in a city like Houston a new car. Boeing also built the Starliner crew capsule for NASA. Starliner has had big problems. Its first test launch failed to reach the space station. Engineers knew that the flight software had errors. They tested again and found more issues. This program is years behind schedule. This timeline comparison is clear. While SpaceX moves quickly, fixing problems with rapid tests, the older government programs move slowly. They have major delays and major cost overruns. This is the competence hierarchy at play. One system learns by doing, the other moves by endless review and paperwork. This delay pushes the timeline for the moon landing. The U.S. was going to beat China by four years. Now the gap is smaller. China is very good at hitting deadlines. Their space station was built on time. Their moon robots were on time. NASA's recent record is the opposite. This close timeline comparison shows the pressure. We must also talk about the final landing move. It looks easy. It is not. You are watching one of the hardest moves ever done by a machine. A rocket like Falcon 9 comes back from space at extreme speed. To land, it must slow down at exactly the right moment. The engines must fire with perfect timing. That timing is measured in fractions of a second. Falcon 9 has landed over 200 times. That number is important. 200 chances to fail. Out of those landings, about 92% worked. That means about 8% did not. In the early days, one famous failure happened in 2016. A Falcon 9 landed on a ship in the ocean. It looked perfect. Then one leg buckled. The rocket slowly fell over and exploded. The cause was a lockout out problem. One small part did not fully seat into place. This failure showed SpaceX what to fix. They added crush cores, which are like car bumpers. They absorb energy when something hits hard. They also strengthen joints. This is how technical mastery improves. They learn from real data. Now think about Starship on Mars. Starship is meant to be the habitat. If it tips, the crew has nowhere to go. During early Starship tests in Texas, one prototype landed almost perfectly. It was about 30 seconds from success. Then a leg failed to deploy correctly. The ship tipped. 
it exploded. That test taught engineers knew where the weak points were in the design. They had to redesign the whole folding system. The legs must hold steady for months or years on Mars. Winds can be strong. Dust storms can push against a tall ship. The legs must hold steady. The legs are designed to adjust slightly. This helps them settle on uneven ground. If one leg has trouble, the others can take more load. That is redundancy at work. Starship adds margin. Consequences are clear. If Starship legs fail on Earth, you lose hardware. If they fail on the Moon, you lose a mission. If they fail on Mars, you risk life lives. The stakes rise sharply. This is why SpaceX is redesigning from scratch. An 8% failure rate was acceptable for early Falcon 9. It taught valuable lessons. Starship cannot accept that rate on Mars, so SpaceX is redesigning from scratch. This is technical system mastery in action. Learn from data, change the design, test again, improve the odds. When you see a rocket land, remember this. You are not watching love. You are watching failures turned into progress. The legs tell that story. Starship must land dozens of times, hundreds over years, on Earth first, then the Moon, then Mars. Each landing builds experience. The biggest reveal is this. Landing legs are not just hardware, they are philosophy. Falcon 9 showed that reuse works even with some failure. Starship aims to take that lesson and push it into harsher worlds. The legs are designed to be repaired. Panels can be removed, parts can be swapped. That matters on Mars. You cannot call a repair truck from Earth. You fix what you have. Another cost comparison focuses on getting things to space. The space launch system is designed to lift about 27 tons to the moon. Starship is designed to lift over 100 tons. That means one starship can carry four times the payload of an SLS, and it costs 410 times less per launch. This simple math shows why one approach is winning the competitive scoreboard. The Artemis program, which is NASA's plan to go back to the moon, is highly dependent on Starship. NASA criticism number four is that relying on SpaceX concentrates risk. If SpaceX hits a wall, there is no backup lander. That is a huge gamble for a national goal. However, that gamble forces SpaceX to perform. Justice consequences apply to everyone. One alternative idea is the belly landing concept. Starship uses its belly to slow down, then flips right before landing. This method is highly effective for reducing speed in thin air like on Mars. China studies wide landing pads built on the moon. That suggests they see heavy landers coming. European agencies discuss hybrid designs. Starship's belly landing is not copying China. It is solving a different problem. Big ships need different answers. The moon forces hard choices. Physics does not care about tradition. In the end, this is not about pride. It is about mass. It is about pressure. It is about dust. It is about failure points. China chose legs because legs fit their size. SpaceX chose a belly flip and strong legs because legs alone do not fit their size. For the listener, this matters because it shows how engineering adapts. Same goal, different paths, both valid, both risky. Results will decide who sets the standard. Your tax dollars are tied to Artemis. They fund Starship's lunar role. If it works, those dollars buy huge progress. If not, the lessons still shape the next design. Space exploration always works this way. The moon is not forgiving. It exposes weak ideas fast. In the next few years, we will see which landing style holds up, legs or belly, careful steps or bold moves. Space has room for both.